So this is it, the last day of Admin of Vim 2025. So just like announced in the first episode, today we're going to talk about quitting Vim. First of all, one thing. In the beginning of this video series, I talked about releasing a Vim crash course. And my original plan was to release it on Christmas Day or New Year's Eve or something like that. But to be honest, this Advent of Vim thing took a little bit more time than I imagined before. And also then there was this dentist thing in between. So I didn't finish the course yet. After this video, I'm going to take a few days off. And in the beginning of January, I'm going to start working on on the course again so the planned release date is somewhere in january 2026 but what i will do still this year i will set up a page where you can enter your email address and get notified when the course gets released and maybe you can even pre-purchase it for a discount so with that out of the way special thanks go out to my youtube channel members my youtube super chatters and thankers and the github sponsors you're the best but now i want to release all the people that have been stuck inside vim waiting for this episode to release and go on with the actual content of this. Hi, my name is Marco. Let's get started. So first of all, let's start with the most basic example here. So in order to being actually able to close Vim, we first have to start it, of course. Let's just open up Vim here. So this is just a fresh buffer. We didn't do any changes here. We have this one window here and this one view into this buffer. So of course, we're also still in normal mode. So we could simply type colon Q, hit enter, and mission completed. Okay, let's open it up again. Still, we won't do anything here, but now we can use Control W and Q to actually close the last window and therefore also quit Vim. Okay, so let's open it up again. And now let's just insert something here. Let's just write something like like and subscribe. It's the best example text I can think of right now. Now, in order to get back to normal mode, of course, we have to press escape. And now we could use colon Q again, you might think, but watch what happens. We get two errors, actually. No write since last change and no write since last change for buffer. No name. So let's say we don't care about the changes we made. Let's hit enter here again. And now we're just going to do a colon Q and then an exclamation mark that forces the quitting without writing anything. So let's hit enter again. And this way we managed to get out of them again. So the exclamation mark basically means, hey Vim, I know what I'm doing, quit anyway, I know all my changes will be lost, and then you just get out. But we could have done it some other way, of course. Let's open up Vim again. Let's insert some text here again, like also hype. Let's hit escape. And now if we wanted to quit and not lose our changes, we actually have to use the write command. And since this is not a file that we open, but just an empty buffer that's not connected to any file here, we still have to give it a file name. So let's do a like.txt. Now you see we've written this file and now we could just quit. Now, since we have this file already, let's open the like text file. Do another change here. Let's, let's add another line. You are great. Thanks. Let's hit escape again. And now we could use a little shortcut. We could use a combination of the write and the quit command. So let's hit colon. And this just wrote the changes that we made to the file. And right after that, it just quit Vim. But we can do that even smarter. So let's open up Vim like.txt again. Let's do another change here. So let's just uppercase this line. Because you are great, of course. So let's just shout it out into the world. So last time we did a WQ and this time we're going to use colon X, which does basically the same thing, but a little bit smarter. Let's open up the file again and let's just open the, the help file for the command X. This is the exit command and here you can see it's just like WQ, but it only writes to the file if actual changes happen. So if we didn't make any change to the file, colon WQ would actually write the file again. So touch it again, so change it again, even though we didn't make any change to the file. And the colon X command or the exit command just would recognize that you didn't make any changes and didn't need to actually write changes to the file and it would just quit. Or if you made changes, it would write to changes and then quit. So pretty smart, this X. Now let's close this help window again. Add another line or add two lines here. Add something like Merry Christmas. Hit escape to get into normal mode again. And now let's just do capital Z Z. And this does exactly the same thing as the colon X command. So it writes to your file if it needs to and quits afterwards. Otherwise it just quits. So let's open up like.txt again. And to show you something else here, let's just add something to this line here. And let's just write, I don't want this here. It was all a mistake. Now I would want to close Vim without writing the changes to the file, but quit it anyway. We could use the colon Q exclamation mark command 
But there's also another shortcut that you can use in normal mode again. You can use capital Z, capital Q, and this does exactly the same thing as colon Q, exclamation mark. So it quits without saving anything. So back to the file again. And now let's just actually open up another file here. Let's, um, I don't know, let's just open up this one. So now we have two files open, right? Let's just check with the, with the ls command. We have two buffers open here. And now let's say we wanted to open up another file here. Let's use a split for that. Let's use a vSplit and open up one of the files in this directory here. And now if I would want to access Vim, we could of course use colon Q, but this would just get rid of one of the windows, the active window actually, and not actually close Vim. So what we could do then is let's open up the file again first. We could use colon QA and this will close all the windows here. Okay, now let's just start Vim with two files open already. So that's a little bit of a recap actually of the first episode. And let's just uh, do a dash capital O to just split vertically again. So now we have a similar situation to before when we closed or tried closing Vim with two windows. And now let's do another change here in this one file. Let's say, hope to see you again soon. And now if we would hit colon QA, there would be this error message again because we didn't write the change to this buffer. What happens if we would have fo been focused on the other window? Let's just check QA again. And this error message came up and we didn't quit anything here. So what we can do instead here is, of course, we could combine commands again. So if we wanted to keep the change here, we'd use the write command in conjunction with the QA. So quit all. So WQA and now hit enter. So this wrote all the files actually and quit Vim again. Let's open up the two files here again, do another change. So let's just do a little bit of more self promotions here. Let's just say there's also membership options available to plug myself a little bit more. <laughs> now, what we also could do is colon XA. And this just wrote the file with the changes here again to this. All the other files are left untouched and then it closes Vim actually. So again, let's open up the files again here. And of course, we could also make a change here and then just discard it again. So let's say no more self-promotions or something like that. And of course, we don't want to keep this change. So colon QA wouldn't work. But of course, we could use colon QA and then the exclamation mark again to say, we really know what we're doing here. We don't want to keep any changes here. And now let's just open up the like text again. And let me just show you something else here. Maybe you don't really want to quit Vim, but there's another way how you can do stuff without getting out of Vim. So maybe you have this, I don't know, complicated uh, setup here of Windows. You don't want to write a session file. You're in the middle of editing and you don't want to write something, but you need to go to the shell. Of course, you could open up a terminal inside Vim, but what you can also do is use Control Z to actually suspend the job in your shell. And you see, you get this little suspended here. Then you can do all kinds of other things like list the files here or I don't know, what, whatever you want. And then if you want to go back to Vim, you just put in the command FG, which stands for foreground and puts Vim back into the foreground here. So that's it. That was Advent of Vim 2025. It was a really, really cool experience to actually commit to this and to get so much positive feedback and so much support from all of you. Thank you all for sticking around. So the video frequency will go down a little bit again, but stay tuned for more content around Vim, NeoVim, and all kinds of terminal tools and other keyboard-driven workflow, of course. Also, the Vim course will be out soon. Don't forget about that. And of course, special thanks go out again to the YouTube channel members and the super thankers and chatters and of course the GitHub sponsors. Thank you so much. Again, you know all the stuff you can do to support me. I'm grateful for every view and every comment, every like and subscribe and so on and so on. So Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. I hope to see you soon again. Thank you all. See you around and take care.